Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and principles in accordance to His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'a. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening? Alhamdulillah, bakhir. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, we're talking about uh, Jama'a Salah. We discussed you know, uh, the rules in regards to Jama'a, the thawab in, in, in praying Jama'a. What I wanted to ask you, Sheikhna, is in regards to standing uh, and the positions. Sometimes we see we have the Imam of the Jama'ah and there's people next to him, um, not behind, actually just next to him. Is this allowed uh, or is it just, I don't know, lack of space or something? That's why people are standing there. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين. The follower of the Imam, which is known as the Ma'mum, is not allowed to stand ahead of the Imam because the Imam, the leader, always in the front. In the battlefield, he's in the front. Um, and that's why it's called Imam, Ya Ummu, is to lead. The leader leads people, so he's always in the front. So in the Jama'ah as well, um, the one is not allowed to stand in the front of the Imam and the Imam is behind and perform the Salah Jama'ah. So always, either you stand aligned with the Imam in the same line, next to each other, or you stand behind the Imam um, and uh, perform the prayers. Of course, the Sayyid mentions that um, as a per mustahab precaution, it's not wajib, but it's better that the one who is taller than the Imam, when he stands for the prayers uh, in which his ruku' and sujood would be ahead of the Imam, tries to go back a bit and okay. tries to avoid Mm. Praying in a way that when he does the sujood and the rukur is to be away from the imam, just okay. in the back of the imam. Mm. So not to precede the imam in the rukur and the sujood. Yes, Hassan. Sheikhna, what about um, ladies and sisters who want to join the jama'ah? Um, normally I see in the mosque they put um, like a partition or some sort of curtain or some sort of parda as we say in our language. Is this acceptable? Does this allow the sisters to join the Jama'ah? Initially, there should be no barriers or curtains or anything like that and screens between the Imam and the Ma'mumin. So if we stand uh, as men to pray as Jama'ah, we have to make sure that there's no barriers between us and the Imam. However, if the Imam is male and the Ma'mumin and the followers are female. In this case, the Sayyid said there's no, no objection, there's no issue with it, that for a screen to be, or the curtain to be between um, the female ma'mumin, the followers, and the Imam. So imagine the Imam is in front, and there's a curtain behind, and the ladies are behind the Imam praying. In this case, there's no issue with it. For the men, is an issue. We cannot do that. But because we have an um, opposite gender here between the Imam and the Ma'mumin, uh, then they can have um, the, the curtain or the screen. And as we've seen this in, in the mosques back in the Muslim countries, that you have the Imam in the, in the front, in the back you have the men, and then you have a curtain or a screen behind the men in which there are women. Of course, there's somebody praying to make sure the link is uh, established between the men and the woman and the Imam. But there's of course a curtain and a screen between them, which is fine. Sheikhna, um, this is a personal question that I have is, and, and I mean, w there was a lot of hoo-ha in regards to in Canada when there was a female Imam of Jama'ah, uh, which is, is, is totally, um, you know, uh, unacceptable. 
uh, and, and we haven't, well, maybe they're doing research on it right now, but we haven't got sufficient evidence to say that a female can lead males in, in the Jama'ah Salah. However, can females lead females in the Jama'ah? Do they have their own sort of Jama'ah Salah or do they pray for other individually and only a male can lead the prayer? Of course, I mean, even the Prophet Sallallahu he appointed a lady to lead some of the uh, women in Medina uh, in leading the prayers, Imam, Imam at Jama'ah. So he appointed a group of women to pray behind this woman. That's fine. And we have this in some places, in some centers and mosques that a uh, lady, Imam Jama'ah, she prays and behind her are uh, the sisters and women. That's fine, there's no issue. It's just the issue that we cannot have uh, a female lady as Imam Jama'ah and behind are men. And of course, this is a fiqh issue. Uh, it's something that we have to go back to the experts and to see why we're not allowed to have such uh, Imam in, in Jama'ah, uh, a female, and the Ma'mumin and the followers are male. This is something fiqh. Alhamdulillah, we believe in Islam as a complete religion and we submitted to Islam so we have to submit to this reality that if there's a narration then we have to respect the narration and follow the guidelines of Ahlul Bayt and the Prophet with this regard Ahsant Shaykhna um, how does one join the Salah in the second Raqqah so the Jama'ah is going on it's in the second Raqqah how does one join that prayer let's say it's Asr and it's the second raqah of Asr prayer. How do I join that uh, Asr prayer? Basically, if you're in the second, if the Imam is in the second raqah and you want to start as the first raqah, um, you just make the intention that this is your where Dhuhr or Asr or whatever the Salah is, and your first raqah, of course, for yourself, and you say the tak takbirah of Allah Akbar, and you join the Salah. In the second rak'ah, for the Imam and for those who follow him, um, they will actually uh, perform, the Imam will perform the Hamdan Surah and the Qunut. You must also do the Qunut as well. You can't keep quiet because it's your first rak'ah. So you must follow the Imam. If he does the Qunut, you do the Qunut as well. And then you go to the Ruku' and Sujood and so forth. And that is counted for you as first rak'ah. And when the Imam sits for tashahud. tashahud you sit in a squatting uh, position okay so your fingers on the yeah, floor yeah i've seen it it's, it's like you're getting up but you're you're not fully getting up exactly so you've began to get up so you're, you're, you're there squatting with your hands your fingers exactly. on the floor exactly. but you don't continue the action exactly so you wait the imam to get up and then you get up afterwards and you continue your salah if it's for the imam will be the third rak'ah for you will be with the second rak'ah so you try to catch up with the Hamd surah you read it because the Imam will be reading Subhanallah Alhamdulillah that's Bihat al Arba. So you have to make sure you catch up with, with the Imam um, by reading the Hamdan surah and the Qunut if you can. Otherwise you just leave the Qunut and you go to the Ruku' with the Imam to catch up with the Jama'ah. What happens then like if it's the third Raqqah but it's my second and I have to do the Tashahud? What happens then? Do, do I quickly do the tashahud and, and, and uh, catch up with uh, the jama'ah? Initially, it's their third rak'ah and the imam is reading subhanAllah alhamdulillah that's the hath al-arba'ah and you're reading and you're, this is your second rak'ah you're reading hamd, surah and qunut if the imam was reading fast and you didn't catch the imam then you have to only read surah al-hamd that's it. You, you just leave and ignore uh, recitation of a surah and the qunut and you go straight with the imam. If you think that, you're not going to catch up with the ruku' of the imam. So you just read the hamd and you try to catch up with the imam's ruku' because he's reading fast, for example. And then you normally uh, continue the rest of the acts. Of course, tashahud, uh, also you do the tashahud and you get up for the next rak'ah which is also you're going to do tasbihat on the third and they do the tasbihat on the fourth. Yes. And, you, and you try to catch up as well with the imam. And yes. as I mentioned previously that the Sayyid allows for one tasbihah. So if you don't catch up uh, with the imam on the fourth, 
-hmm. that he's reading and you're on the third, one tasbih is sufficient to catch up with the Imam. Ah, interesting. So, Shaykh, what about uh, if, if I'm joining the Salah um, on the third raqa, uh, obviously there's not enough time for Surah Al-Hamd. Uh, maybe the Imam is reciting Surah Al-Hamd or maybe he's doing uh, the, the, the Tasbih. Um, what is one to do? What am I going to do? It's my first raqa. I've just joined. I need to recite Surah Hamd and, and a lot of different Surah. Does that rule still apply to me as well? That I can get away with just reading Surah Al-Hamd and continue the Jama'ah? Or do I have to do Surah Al-Hamd and another Surah because it's my first raqa, uh, but it's the third raqa for the Jama'ah? In this case, you have to wait because you may not be able to catch up to even completing the Surah Al-Hamd because the Imam is, is reciting, let's say, the second Tasbih or the third Tasbih. He's on the last Tasbih and any second he might go to the Ruku'ah. So you must wait until he finishes the Tasbihat Al-Arba'ah. So when he goes to Ruku'ah, you say Allah Akbar with the intention and you go to Ruku'ah with him. That's okay. the best option. Join Otherwise, if you see that the Imam is reading slowly the Tasbihat Al-Arba'ah, he just started Tasbihat, that's fine. You join him and you read uh, Hamdan Surah and then you join the Imam for the, uh, uh, remainder, of the remainder of the Salah. Shaykhna, what does one do if I've, 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 come, I've just gone and done wudu, I've come into the main hall, I do not know which raqa the congregation is praying. Uh, what should one do in such a situation? It is permissible for the one, for the follower to join the jama'ah and follow the imam in this situation. But as the Sayyid states here that he must recite alhamd and the surah because he doesn't know in which rak'ah the imam is. But for yourself who just joined recently, uh, you read the hamd and surah with the intention of the qurbah. In other words, seeking newness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seeking closeness to Allah, the Almighty. And you join the jama'ah and uh, there should be no problem at all. And even if the one learns afterwards that the imam was in the first or second rak'ah, his salah is valid, that's fine. Because he did it just with the qurba of getting newness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So by this intention, you can continue the salah with the imam. Shaykhna, what is uh, the ruling in regard to recitation? Should I listen to the imam and what he's saying and not utter any, uh, any dhikr at all? Or am I allowed to recite behind the imam? Maybe in, in the ruku, what if I finish my dhikr before the imam? Is this valid? Is this allowed? Or is it not allowed at all? With regard to the hamd and surah, um, if the salah is the one in which recited aloud, like in Salat al-Fajr and Maghrib and Asha, it's better that you keep silent and listen to the, the qira'ah and the recitation of the Imam. When he reads Alhamd and the Surah, you listen to the, to the ayat and, and the verses that he's reading. Um, in Salat al-Dhur al-Asr, in which he reads them silent, you're allowed and it's mustahab that you do dhikr. La ilaha illallah, subhanallah, for example. You read this these dhikr and even the Sayyid mentions that salawat ala Muhammad ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi That even you can mention this while the Imam is reading the alhamd and the surah in dhuhr and asr silently. So yes, you can do, mention the dhikr. And even if you're in the ruku' and uh, you just finished the dhikr, continue uh, sending the salawat on Muhammad and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi and even mentioning more dhikr la ilaha illallah subhanallah uh, Allahu akbar whatever you can mention as as dhikr and I, Quran that's fine I heard it's even acceptable to say the names of the imma as the dhikr is this true you can even say the names of the imma um, we are saying Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad so Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the, the prophet and he's the master of the imma alayhi wa sallam and Ali Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's fine. Um, mentioning their names, you know, let's say you say in sujood, Allahumma rizqni shafa'at al Hussein as a dua. As a dua, all these things, that's fine. No issue with it. MashaAllah, Thank you very much, Sheikhna. Any last advice in regards to 
Jama'a Salah because it's not very common and it's not popular. We're not famous as Shia for Jama'a Salah. And I, was, I think you've seen it as well when you go into, uh, you know, Amal night or you go to, uh, you know, um, a mosque, in a Shia mosque, you see a lot of people praying individually rather than get collecting together. Is there any advice you'd give to the, you know, to the viewers? The advice, as I've mentioned, the narration in which that the reward for uh, the one who prays the jama'ah and this great reward in which cannot be counted if it exceeds 10, 10 followers for the, um, with the imam. And it's important that we have to have this culture of jama'ah. We have to learn this culture and, and apply it into our daily life, even at home. Not only in the mosque or center or Hassaniya, we try to learn as a family member, you know, bring my family, the kids, yalla, let's start Salah Jama'a. And gradually, uh, I think our generation will learn and will get used to this habit, which is a good habit, and uh, start the Salah Jama'a wherever they've uh, gathered. And of course, we have to appreciate the fact that the one who prays, the Imam must be Adil, just. Has, you know, preserves these conditions of the jama'ah. That's why we have this issue of, of the uh, um, uh, the difference between us and the non, non Shia. That they pray behind whoever comes. You know, first come, first serve. He stands and he says, Allah Akbar, and the people follow him. Maybe he's shaved, maybe he's such and such. It uh, doesn't matter. We have these conditions of adala, uh, righteousness must be met. And that's, that might be one of the uh, reasons, but um, ma mostly people are, mashallah, mu'min, faithful, those who gather in the Islamic centers and around. I think we have to uh, teach this uh, generation uh, to learn more about the jama'ah and the thawab, and the reciters, the uh, lecturers should also encourage in their majalis as well. Thank you very much, Sheikh, and thank you for today's discussion. And thank you to all of you for joining us on this episode. Inshallah, we pray that um, you can um, get involved in congregational prayers and you can promote the Sunnah, Inshallah. Until next time with a new discussion, Assalamu Alaikum Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh.